Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to Sharks for Kids Shark Week, featuring Jossum Woman in the Shark Field. Uh, my name is David Piper, and I'll be your host for today. So for those of you who are new to Sharks for Kids, they're creating the next generation of shark and ocean advocates through education, outreach, and adventure. So during this week, uh, make sure to head over to, to sharksforkids.com and check out the amazing selection of curriculum, photo, videos, and interviews with leaders um, within the shark field. So it's my pleasure to introduce Claire Preble, who is our speaker for today. So Claire is a PhD student working with Southampton University and the National Oceanography Center, Southampton. So Claire first came to TOFO Mozambique as a research assistant for Dr. Simon Pierce at the start of 2011. After nine inspiring months working as part of the whale shark research program, she saw a great opportunity to develop a PhD. So Claire is examining the movement patterns and feeding ecology of whale sharks, which is the world's largest fish, using data from tissue samples and acoustic tagging. So with this approach, Claire aims to further explain how and why these gentle giants use the Mozambican coastline. So without further ado, I'll pass it along to Claire. Whoa. Hi, everybody. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, they won't yeah. be able to, they're all muted right now, so. That's <laughs> well, right. It'd be a bit of a wave if you can hear me all right. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks so much, guys, for joining me. Um, I'm really honored to be able to do this talk for you all. Um, I'm going to, I had a really good introduction already, but um, I'm just going to switch over to a presentation that I prepared and uh, tell you a little bit more about myself and uh, the work that I do with whale sharks. So hopefully this will work in a minute. Nope. And cool. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, I had a great introduction already, but my name is Claire Preble. Um, I work with whale sharks, which uh, is a pretty amazing job, I have to say. Um, so, I'm currently doing a PhD at the moment at the University of Southampton. So, that's actually on the south coast of the UK, uh, which is where I'm speaking to you from today. Um, I first went to Mozambique in 2011. Um, I had always been interested in marine biology and sharks, but I'd never actually seen a whale shark until I went to Mozambique for the first time. It was a pretty amazing experience, and I was lucky enough to be able to hang out there with the Marine Megafauna Foundation and help out with other people's projects for about eight or nine months. Um, I totally fell in love with these animals, and so it kind of... Uh, encouraged me to take my studies further and so now I'm a PhD student uh, half uh, supported by University UK and um, I'm mostly doing all of my field work with still with the Marine Megafauna Foundation out in Africa. Um, as well as being a marine biologist, um, I um, also, whilst uh, doing my job with the university and, and the uh, foundation, I'm also a pretty keen photographer. Uh, I really believe in taking some really beautiful photographs and I, I feel like this actually encourages people to be interested in conservation issues. Um, so as well as doing all of my work, I like to uh, fund these things with photographs as well. So um, this is my other office. Um, this is a really nice aerial photo of the beach that I work in in Mozambique. Like I said, I've been working out there probably uh, on and off since 2011. Um, I think you can hear that I'm English, uh, but I have spent quite a lot of time out in Mozambique and it's also kind of my second home. So for those of you that aren't familiar with whale sharks, I'm just going to give you guys um, a little quick intro um, about these amazing spotty giants. So the name whale shark is actually a little bit confusing, to be honest. Um, whale sharks are actually true sharks. They're not whales. So they're actually really, really big fish. And they're part of the shark and ray family, the elasmobranchs, which means that unlike other fish, 
a skeleton is made up of cartilage. So that's the same stuff in your nose and your ears, rather than having bones as a skeleton. You can see from the picture below as well that they've got five gills on the side of their head. So unlike the dolphin above that has to come to the surface to breathe, these guys uh, filter the oxygen from the water using their gills, like the uh, other fish. Uh, whale sharks, because they're fish, they're also uh, cold-blooded animals. So uh, as you guys have already have just been told, whale sharks are the biggest fish in the world. So these guys get up to about 18 meters long. So I guess the equivalent might be, this is almost the size of two school buses lined up next to each other. Um, they're pretty, pretty big animals. Even the baby ones can weigh about between 30 and 40 tons. So these are really, really big fish. Well, even though they're really, really big, um, these guys are completely harmless to humans. They're actually one of three, only three filter feeding species of sharks. So we've got the whale sharks, which are the biggest and the best. Uh, we've got the deep sea megamouth shark, and we've also got the slightly sort of warmer, slightly cooler water basking shark that we mostly get uh, in, in northern hemisphere. So near the UK and sometimes in Canada as well. Um, you can see from this picture, uh, they actually what they do is they have really, really big mouths. They gulp in huge amounts of water, which go to the back of their throat. And you can see there that they've got these filtering pads. They're basically like just giant sieves at the back of their throat, which they use to sieve out zooplankton, the uh, tiny little animals that uh, swim around in the water column. So whale sharks um, are a little bit uh, solitary. Most of the time you'll only see whale sharks by themselves. They're not particularly social animals, unlike dolphins and whales that might hang out with their family groups. Uh, whale sharks generally hang out by themselves. However, as you can see from this photograph, um, whale sharks do gather together in really, really big groups sometimes. And the reason that they gather together like this is because of food. Um, these guys are really just giant food hoovers in the water. They just follow the food around wherever it goes. And if there is a lot of food in one area, they'll all get together and you can get up to about 800 different whale sharks in the same area feeding um, at the same time. So why do we even study whale sharks? Well, apart from them being really, really beautiful, charismatic animals, um, they're pretty important to tourism because whale sharks uh, gather mostly in coastal areas. They're pretty warm water animals as well. They mostly hang out uh, near the equator where the water is a lot warmer. This makes it really easy and really nice for people to be able to swim with them. Um, so this is really important for a lot of people's jobs and livelihoods to have the whale sharks uh, around their coastline. Whale sharks also aren't doing so well in most places. Uh, we've seen a real drop in the number of whale sharks we're seeing around the world. Um, this is partly because, if you can see in this photograph, they do get caught accidentally. When boats are out there fishing for things like tuna, they do accidentally catch whale sharks, which isn't so great. Whale sharks also get hit by boats quite a lot. Um, you can see this one has just lost a piece of its dorsal fin, which isn't ideal. And also, that can end badly, even worse than just losing a bit of fin. Sometimes they get killed by boats and propellers as well. Um, whale sharks also get caught in really big nets. Uh, they can't actually swim backwards, so when whale sharks get caught in a net, they can't actually reverse themselves out of there to free themselves. So once they get caught, sometimes they can, they can drown in these nets. But what do we do to study these whale sharks? Well, apart from being super lucky to get, to get in the water with these guys, um, we also take photographs of them. So the reason that we do that is because whale sharks have completely unique 
patterns on them. So these beautiful spots and stripes that you get to see on these whale sharks are completely unique to every individual. They're like a, they're like a fingerprint, really. So if we can take a photograph of the whale sharks, uh, we kind of have a record of which shark we're looking at. So we can find out which sharks we, we're seeing every day when we go out. So uh, use some pretty cool technology. We use laser beams sometimes on our cameras to get an estimate of the whale shark size as well. So instead of uh, guessing their length, we have a really good idea of how big these sharks are. So we can monitor how quickly they're growing and uh, how big the sharks are. We also like to know if we're looking at uh, girl sharks and uh, luckily for us sharks have a pretty obvious way of telling us whether they're male or female sharks so the picture you're looking at here is some pictures of claspers so these are what the males have like the male sexual organs that they have um, outside their body and what we do is uh, just intrude on their personal space just a little bit and have a look in between their pelvic fins, just at the back there, near their fins. And what we're looking for is these claspers. It's also pretty useful as well, because we can use this to tell how, roughly how old or how mature these sharks are as well. Um, the photograph in the bottom left there shows pretty, pretty small claspers, so we would call this a juvenile male shark. And um, if you look at the top left there, that's a mature male. You can see those claspers are really, really big and really, really obvious there. Idea of the age groups of sharks that we're looking at at the moment as well. We also use some pretty cool technology as well. Uh, we use loads of different types of electronic tags, which we put onto the sharks, which can tell us loads of different things everywhere, everything from how deep they're diving uh, to the temperature of the water around them, how much they're, how fast they're swimming, and how deep they're swimming. It's some really useful technology that we use as well. I'm just going to show you a quick video as well, hopefully. See what it looks like when these sharks are swimming around. Um, we call this their jewelry. We give them some really, really cool jewelry that they get to swim around with in the water. So this is what it looks like when uh, when we put the tags on them. Cool. That was actually a shark called uh, Simon. Uh, we named him after my boss. <laughs> So one of the main things that we found out so far uh, about whale sharks um, is that quite a lot of the whale sharks we see near the coast when they're feeding are actually pretty small sharks. If you remember I said they can get up to about 18 meters long. Most of the sharks we see are between about five and seven meters. Um, as well as that, most of the sharks we see are immature as well. So whale sharks, are mature at about nine meters long. So most of the sharks we see are, are pretty young. So at the moment, we have a lot of information about the sharks that we see hanging around the coast. And we don't really know a whole whole lot about what happens when, when they leave the coast. The ocean is really big and uh, we don't really know what they're doing when they swim out there. So most of the work that I'm doing at the moment is trying to find out a bit more about that. Um, and I use uh, the, the principle of you are what you eat. So these whale sharks go around living their lives, swimming around the ocean and eating plankton. And what that does is when they're swimming around, um, where they're going and what they're eating goes into their tissues and it basically becomes like a, a little whale shark passport. So we can tell from what's in their skin uh, about things about where they've been going and what they've been eating, which is pretty cool. What we actually do is we um, take a small piece of the whale shark skin. Um, whale sharks have some of the thickest skin in the animal kingdom. It can be up to about 10 centimeters thick in some points. And that's thicker than elephants and it's thicker than rhinos. So uh, this really doesn't hurt the whale sharks very much, um, which is great. Um, what we do after that is a lot of lab work with a lot of scary machines. 
But what we get out of it is some really amazing information um, about what the whale sharks have been doing um, a few years before the time that we've seen them. So we can kind of get an idea and look back in time and find out what these whale sharks have been doing secretly while we haven't been looking. At the moment, uh, most of my work is with whale sharks in uh, Tanzania, in the middle there, uh, also in Mozambique, which is the spot at the bottom. And I'm also lucky enough to collaborate with the people working in Qatar. Uh, so that's the, the dot at the top there. And it's, I'm still working on it, but one of the really cool things I found out is that these whale sharks that we see in Mozambique, even if we only see them for a few days a year, and then we don't see them again for like a whole year, or two years even, um, they're really not going very far. It turns out that the sharks that we see at each of these places is pretty resident to the area that we see them in. So really, it's important to know this because it means that each country really has to look after their own whale sharks. They really belong to the countries that we find them in. So when we're trying to make good management plans or conservation decisions, it's really important to know where they're going so that we can do our, the best job we can to try and look after them. Um, in the future, I really hope to start working with some other people all around the world and solving some of the other whale shark uh, questions and conundrums that we have at the moment. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll just stick to my PhD for the, <laughs> for the moment. And as my very last thing, I'll just show you uh, the really cool stuff that we get to do and see um, when we're out there. These are a pair of sharks. One, the one on the left is a male, and the one on the right is a female. And these guys were just hanging around in Tanzania, and they're actually eating little fish. You see that little cloud by their head? Well, these are teeny tiny fish that both of them are trying to eat off the surface. It was a really amazing day. And I got super excited about this, and I just started filming these sharks. And then I kind of lost track of what was going on, and then this happened. Um, I'm just going to leave it there for the moment. And I think if I stop, have I stopped sharing? Oh, there we go. I'm back. So uh, I think that's my presentation for the moment, and I'd be really delighted to answer some questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, Claire. No worries. All right. Yeah, so let's get into um, some uh, questions here. So we'll just go one by one to the different classrooms, and if you could, uh, yeah, ask one or two questions if you're interested in doing that. So... Um, We'll start with uh, Shelly. So I'm going to unmute you now. Can you hear me? Perfect. So do you have uh, do you have any questions for for Claire here? Sure, Colin. Um, why do we talk about that? That is such a good question. You guys always ask the best questions. So we think the reason that they have spots is because when they're very, very little, if there's a bigger shark or a big animal that wants to eat them, if you look at the whale sharks from the top and they've got spots, what it does is it breaks up the outline of the baby shark. So it doesn't, it's a little bit harder to see. So we think that it's mostly because for when they're younger and it stops them being um, eaten by bigger animals. We think it helps them a lot to camouflage themselves from bigger animals. Question. Riley? Yeah. How are they born? How are they born? Oh my gosh, you guys. These this is these are like the, the golden questions that whale shark scientists are trying to answer at the moment. So right now we don't know very much about uh, how whale sharks uh, reproduce. What we do know is actually based on one female shark that's ever been found that had, uh, they had, she had 312 baby whale sharks inside her belly when they found her. Um, each of those little babies was about 50 or 60 centimeters long. 
And so um, what the whale sharks do is actually the eggs, uh, unlike other sharks who sometimes lay eggs, I don't know if you guys have heard of little mermaid's purses, so some sharks do that. Whale sharks actually, the babies develop inside the mother, so each of those whale sharks is born at about 50 centimeters long. Um, and we think what they do is have lots and lots of babies all at once um, in the hopes that uh, a few of them will survive. All right, perfect. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle in a question we got for, oh, from our uh, YouTube channel here. So grade three student here asks, what equipment do you have to wear in order to be able to swim with the sharks? So it kind of depends uh, where you're doing this work, but um, if the water is cold, um, I, I get cold in a lot of water. So I generally wear some kind of wetsuit or rash vest. So this um, stops me from getting cold, but also sometimes in the water, you know, it can protect you from the sun. And if there happen to be jellyfish in the water as well, it can protect you from that. Um, I also wear a mask and a snorkel, so I do all of this while I'm snorkeling. Um, and also I wear really, really big flippers, so really big fins to help me swim with the whale sharks. Um, they're very big and they look like they're swimming really slowly, um, but they are not. They are very, very fast swimmers, so I have to wear really big flippers to keep up with them. And then, depending on what I'm doing, I'll generally bring my camera with me as well. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go over to uh, Robin's classroom here. Uh, all right, so if you have any questions, uh, go for it. When you, when you like take off, take off like a, a bit of the whale shark skin, then does the whale shark feel it? So sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Um, I have to say most of the time they don't even notice it's happening, which is really, really great. Um, sometimes they do notice, um, but it doesn't hurt them. They don't actually have very many um, nerves in the area that we take the skin from. So we don't think they can actually feel any pain, but they just feel the, the pressure um, of us taking the skin. Um, but whale sharks also have amazing healing abilities, and um, that's the, yeah, the tiny little mark that we leave um, clears up in a few days. So we really try to have the least amount of interference with the whale sharks. So they're, they're usually okay with it. All right, and do we have uh, one more question from Robin's class? Yes. Um, how long have been? How long have you been studying whale sharks? Sorry, can you say that again? How long have you been studying whale sharks? How long? Is that how long have I been studying whale sharks? Yeah? Cool. Well, I guess I've been helping. So there's a guy that I work with who I have been helping him study whale sharks since 2011. So I guess it's getting on for about six years now. But I only started uh, my studies for, for my PhD um, a couple of years ago. But I've been uh, swimming around with them and collecting data for, yeah, about six years now. Cool. All right. So we have another question from our YouTube chat here. So a first grader asks, how long is their life cycle? Oh my gosh, you guys, you're really, really challenging me here today. <laughs> so um, I guess whale sharks are pretty long lived animals. We really don't know for sure. Um, but we estimate that the whale sharks can live up to 80 years old. They're really, really, um, they're really, really long-lived animals, um, especially for fish. So they live pretty much as long as humans do, um, but they they only really become adults at about thirty years old. So they're much, much slower to become adults than than humans. Perfect. All right, we're just going to jump over to uh, Nicole's class here. Nicole, if you've got a couple questions for Claire. Yeah. 
what is the deepest um, amount? Like, how deep have you swam to find a whale shark? <laughs> um, I, I can free dive for probably about between 12 and 15 meters. Um, I'm not the best free diver ever, but um, I can go a little bit deep to, to do my work. Um, you, it's funny when you're swimming with whale sharks and you've really got to get some work done, you can swim a lot deeper than you can normally. Um, it's not really that deep at all uh, because whale sharks can swim down to about uh, two kilometers. So uh, we really do, I really do have to wait until they're quite near the surface for them before I can uh, take any pictures or anything. Adult whale sharks. All right, uh, do you have uh, one more question, Nicole? Does the adult whale shark have any predators? That is such a good question. And so once whale sharks get to about six or seven meters long, there's really not many animals that can actually uh, eat whale sharks, partly because of their size and partly because their skin is so thick. So you guys know great white sharks? I'm pretty sure some of you know that. Um, you know, they're sort of one of the top apex predators and they can just eat anything. So basically, I think if a, whale sh if a white shark tried to eat a whale shark, really all that would happen is it would leave a few scratches on the outside of their skin. So there's nothing really uh, natural that will harm whale sharks once they're adults. Unfortunately, it's mostly humans that um, do all the damage to whale sharks once they get to be adults. Like I said, things like uh, big boats and nets and accidental catch, and some places in the Far East, I'm afraid, um, catch whale sharks on purpose as well. So um, mostly just humans once they're, once they're big enough. Cool. And we've got some more questions from the YouTube channel that I'll throw in here. So. A, someone from Gananoque, Canada asks, how aggressive can whale sharks get? <laughs> I would have to say uh, not at all ever, really. I think at least with humans, uh, I, I haven't observed ever any, any behavior that I would describe as aggressive. I think the worst that's going to happen is when they start eating, they get into this zone, they get really blinkered, and they just have no idea what's going around them, and they're just focused on eating. So I think the worst thing that's going to happen is they're accidentally going to bump into you because they just don't even see you're there. I think that's probably the most aggressive thing I've ever seen them do. All right, sounds good. And um, another question from the channel. So a grade three student asks, uh, when you touch the sharks, what do they actually feel like? So generally, I don't touch the whale sharks. Um, there's not really any need to. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, one time I was getting back onto the boat uh, and a whale shark actually swam beneath me and I couldn't get onto the boat quick enough. So I scrunched up my legs to try and make it not hit me. Unfortunately, its tail just swiped past my legs when, uh, when I was getting on the boat. And their skin is like sandpaper, like really, really rough sandpaper. And it took all of my skin off my knees. So I would generally say I wouldn't touch them. Um, the amazing thing is that their skin is super, super tough for protection, but also it makes them really, really hydrodynamic in the water. So it also makes them uh, move through the water very, very easily. But um, I, I wouldn't advise touching a whale shark. It's just going to hurt you. Okay, good to know. Um, so we're going to jump over to Jay's class if, if you have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, um, is there any type of like conservation that like cares about um, whale sharks like staying alive? <laughs> you mean are there any, any, any conservation groups uh, that work on like, whale sharks management? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, there's several groups in the world. So there's the uh, NGO that I work with in Mozambique called the Marine Megafauna Foundation. Um, there's a group in the Philippines, uh, there's a group in the 
you know, in Mexico, there's few groups in Mexico and Qatar. I think there's almost every single, I guess, coastal aggregation sites, almost everywhere that the whale sharks get together each year, um, has a sort of research and conservation group um, associated with them. So yeah, there's quite a lot of groups around the world that are, um, as well as me, working on uh, helping these whale sharks. All right, and uh, do you have one more question from Jay's class? Um, when you first started getting into whale sharks, like looking at them and stuff, were you ever afraid of them, or was it just natural? Oh, can you just say that again? Sorry, the connection is really bad. I think the question was when you got involved with whale sharks, um, were you ever afraid of them at any point? Oh gosh, no. Um, I think when I first saw them, I was mostly just shocked at how big they were because people can tell you how big they are, but until you're like in the water with a whale shark, you really don't have a good idea of what it feels like to be next to them. They really are very big. Um, I don't think I was ever scared of them, no. Um, I, yeah, I already knew exactly what their behavior was like. And really, most of the time when you're in the water with them, they just seem like they're super, super chill. They do move quickly, but they don't look like they're moving quickly. And they really just look like they're chilling. They're just chilling in the water. So I just find it every time. I've seen hundreds of sharks now, and I can't say it's any less exciting six years later than it was the first time I saw them. It's, it's, I find it pretty amazing every time. I've never been to them. Cool. Um, Claire, if you have some time, we have a few more questions from the YouTube channel. Or do you have, let's go. Okay, perfect. So let's see how this. Um, so great for us to ask. What is the? Uh, it's probably a difficult question. The um, roughly how many spots do whale sharks usually have? I have absolutely <laughs> no idea. Um, the only thing I can tell you is that it's it the number of spots as well as the pattern is completely unique to every shark. Um, some of them have really loads and loads of really dense spots and some of them have really big blobby ones that are spread out, but I don't know, maybe that should be a competition one time, I, I feel. We should, uh, we should get someone to count all the spots on a whale shark. I have no idea. I couldn't even guess, I'm afraid. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, no, that was uh, definitely a tricky one. <laughs> um, okay, and so ooh, we got a ton of questions from grade four class. I'm just going to pick a couple for interest of time, uh, but they were wondering, uh, do they have teeth and how fast can they usually swim? Okay, so the teeth question, um, they do have teeth. Um, they've got two rows of teeth on their upper and lower jaw. They've got about 300 rows of teeth actually, but each tooth is only about one millimeter long. They're really, really tiny. Um, and we know that they're not for eating, uh, they're filter feeders, so they really just filter the water, but we think that they might use their teeth possibly for mating um, in other shark species, and we've never seen whale sharks mate ever, but in other shark species, um, sometimes the males use their teeth to hold on to the females during mating. So we think maybe that's what they use them for, uh, but we're not sure, it's just a guess. And uh, what was the other, was the second part of that question? Um, how, how fast can they usually swim? Okay, um, I don't think anyone's ever recorded it. Um, I think they can swim quite quickly, um, but it depends whether they're feeding or whether they're just traveling. Um, but uh, I don't think anyone's got like a speedometer on them or anything, but um, I'll look it up. I feel like someone may have put some fancy tags on recently that might be able to tell might be able to uh, tell you that. So I should know, but I'll have to get back to you. For sure, sounds good. Now that's a, another pretty tricky question. So uh, here's, an, here's a good question here. So what can we do as kids to help save the sharks? That's a really good question. Um, I think if you guys are interested, um, I would say uh, become marine biologists, but also a really cool thing to do is that a lot of um, conservation groups and research groups, including mine, what we do to help uh, raise money for conservation is we actually have an adoption program where you can adopt a, adopt a whale shark. You can do it as a class or you can do it as an individual. 
And what you guys get to do is name a whale shark, basically, and you get an adoption certificate, and that means that you get all this information about the whale shark. And every time it's seen, you get a message telling you where it was seen um, and when it was seen for the rest of its life, which is pretty cool. Um, otherwise, you'll have to talk to me in a few years about becoming a marine biologist. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we'll just do a couple more here, if that's okay, Claire. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, so one person asked, uh, if the eyes are on the opposite sides of their heads, uh, then how well is their, is their vision? So um, I would say there hasn't been a huge amount of work done on whale shark vision um, because they're not predators because they don't have to hunt their prey, they mostly just have to uh, smell it in the water. Their eyesight, um, I think, is about, so I think if you guys could imagine if you go in the water snorkeling with a mask on, uh, that's a bit like what the whale sharks can see as well. So they can see about as well as people in the water. Um, and it's true because their eyes are on either side of their head, they, they do have sort of blind spots uh, near their back as well. Um, but yeah, they see about as well as people in the water. Perfect. Okay, and um, so is, why do sharks always have to be moving forward? Or uh, moving at all, I think. Okay, this is actually a red herring. This isn't actually always true. Um, some sharks, some shark species do actually have to stay moving. And the reason is they have to keep the water going over their gills. Uh, so they have to keep uh, the water going over their gills so they can breathe, so they can take the oxygen out of the water. Um, some sharks can do this cool thing where they can actually suck water in and out of their mouth and flush it over their gills. Uh, so they can actually, like a lot of nurse sharks, you guys might have heard of leopard sharks, um, they sit on the bottom on purpose in, in on the reefs and stuff and, and they can actually breathe while they're staying still as well um, However, if they are caught in a net uh, like the whale sharks are sometimes they, they can also drown if they're, if they're kept stationary for too long and they get tired Cool um, All right, so we're close to being done uh, one student asked, um, how do they have any defense uh, mechanisms? Like, how can they defend themselves from, say, a great white shark? Um, the great thing is uh, they don't really need to. Uh, they are really, really big, so there's actually not that many animals that would even try and take on a whale shark. And it's really just their thick skin as well. Um, if when they feel threatened, and this sometimes happens when people get a bit too close to them, what they'll do is they'll, uh, they'll what we call banking, which is they roll their back towards the thing that they find threatening. And this is where their thickest skin is on their back. So they really just present their sort of their armor towards the threat. And then aside from that, they, despite looking really big, I'm, I'm I, they can, I've seen them swim very, very fast, so if they really wanted to, they can also um, swim away pretty quickly also. Perfect. All right, so we'll just end it off with one last uh, question here, just for interest of time. So uh, why, did, why, do you want, why do you like studying sharks? Uh, why did you get involved in this to begin with? I'm going to be totally honest, accidentally. But um, I have always been, I've, I think I've always been a, a marine person. I learned to dive when I was, when I was pretty young. I was a diver when I was 14. I've always been really interested in the marine world. Um, I lived in a lot of places when I was younger as well. So I was really lucky enough to uh, live in a few places where I could see um, all of these different uh, tropical reefs. And I have really loved being a diver. So I, I basically just got an opportunity to uh, do some work with basking sharks in the UK a few years ago. And I really liked them and that kind of stepping stoned onto working with whale sharks. And I've just never looked back since. As soon as I went to Mozambique, I just fell in love with these slightly special spotty giants and I just haven't looked back. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you uh, so much, Claire. Uh, for doing this. We really appreciate the time and all the incredible insight you give about uh, the whale sharks. Total pleasure, total pleasure. Okay, so I'll just unmute uh, everyone's microphone now if you want to give a big thank you to Claire. Okay.
Bye. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Claire, and all the classrooms for participating. So uh, make sure to check out our other Hangouts on YouTube um, and also the other Hangouts we have coming up uh, uh, the Shark Week this week. Thanks, everyone.